received uh, public input. We have had three requests, uh, one declined under sections 7.7.2 and 7.7.4, largely that this is uh, under 7.7.2, this issue was not one where we have decision-making powers. And secondly, um, under uh, point, uh, 7.7.4, and I note that the, uh, the person wanting to submit uh, will be submitting to the appropriate board that do have the powers, which is Auckland Transport, at their March 2018 meeting. The two I've accepted are from, firstly from Dr Sarah Zito, the Scientific Officer of the Royal New Zealand Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and secondly, uh, Penny Bright. Um, if I can ask Dr Sarah Zito please to come forward uh, to talk to uh, the issue of sale and, pri uh, and private use of fireworks. Welcome Sarah. Um, Thank you. We've got five minutes. We'll keep pretty strictly to it because of the uh, activities this morning, we're, we're, we're a wee bit behind time. Okay. And then I'll open it up for one or two questions afterwards. Okay, great. Thank you very much for having me here to speak today. Um, so, in addition to the harms that fireworks can cause to people and damage to property, they can really result in very significant distress and often injury for many animals every year. Um, we actually do have a number of peer-reviewed studies um, from New Zealand that have covered this issue in the last 10 years. Um, there are two New Zealand studies that um, regard companion animals, one in 2010 and one that was conducted last year. So in the 2010 study, um, 46 per cent of the animals that were reported on in that study were afraid of fireworks according to their owners and in the 2017 study, so last year, this was up to 59.5 per cent. And this is a very large number of animals, um, particularly the study from last year reports on nearly 20,000 animals um, that um, were part of that survey. So horses are also affected, and we also have a study from New Zealand um, from 2016 um, of um, a significant number of horses, um, of which actually 79, so I'm sorry, um, that says 39, that it's 79 per cent of the animals um, reported on in that study um, showed fear of fireworks. Um, and in addition, 35% um, of the respondents um, in that study reported having horses that broke through fences in response to fireworks. And this not only leads to distress and injury for the horses and obviously property damage, but there's also the potential for escaped horses to be involved in motor vehicle accidents um, and also endanger the public. So fireworks also have a very significant impact on wildlife in the vicinity. Um, and this is a really major concern, although we don't have a lot of research in this area. We do know that animals change their behaviour in response to loud and abrupt noises, and this can lead to injury, disruption of feeding, abandonment of young, stress and mortality. And in particular, we know that fireworks have a really significant impact on birds. Um, they result in them taking flight, and they actually fly up to altitudes that are far above what is normal. Um, and this causes them to become disorientated, exhausted, stressed, and potentially injured. And it also leads to nest abandonment and mortality. Um, and in addition to these harms, wildlife and other animals are sometimes targeted and injured or killed deliberately with fireworks, like the duck in this picture um, from a few years ago. Um, I'd just like to note that farm animals are also impacted, but we don't have any research um, on that subject. So all three New Zealand studies have documented not only fear um, in animals of fireworks, but also significant numbers of animals that are injured either directly or indirectly as a result of fireworks. So in 2010 study, 6% um, of the companion animals had been injured. In the 2016 study, 26% um, of horse owners had had a horse injured as a result of fireworks. Um, and these um, injuries included lacerations, strains or sprains, and even broken limbs, which generally result in the death of the horse um, because they <coughs> have to be euthanized. Um, and in the study from last year, we found at least 345 animals had been severely injured at least once due to fireworks, and 15% of those animals had actually um, needed to be euthanized or they had died as a result of their injuries. 
So the SPCA's position is that we would like to see a complete ban on the private sale and use of fireworks due to the really significant harms that they cause to animals, people and property. Um, this ban could prevent the deaths and psychological trauma, serious injury of animals and um, the distress and harm that the fireworks cause to animals in our community. Um, the New Zealand Veterinary Association and the New Zealand Companion Animal Council also support a ban and many other countries such as Canada, South Africa, Australia and Finland have really strict limitations or bans on private fireworks. Um, so we would not be alone in taking this step. Um, the SPCA is, however, supportive of continuing to allow appropriately regulated public dis firework displays, um, so people wouldn't have to miss out entirely, but it would be a much better regulated and much safer process. Um, and just in closing, I'd just like to highlight that all three of these New Zealand studies um, showed consistent public support for banning the private sale and use of fireworks. Um, with 83% of people in the 2010 study, 90% in the 2016 study, and 84% in the 2017 study all supporting a ban on the private sale and use of firearms. Um, thank you. Firearms. Thank, thank oh, you very sorry, much. Firearms. Sorry, <laughs> that too. Really. And those you were, were absolutely within eight seconds of yep. the <laughs> limitation, so you've, you. uh, you've, 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 you've prepared it well. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that, Sarah. Um, just, we've got time, I think, for, should we take three questions? Councillor Casey. Sarah, on that last slide, could you just talk a bit more about the public support for the ban of the private sale and use of um, fireworks in terms of the SPCA, who's been at the forefront of this? Yep. So um, this is not a, a new um, item that we've, um, we've been trying to address this over the past 10 years. So there was a, a petition um, some years ago with, over 30, with, with nearly 32,000 people calling for the ban um, of fireworks here in New Zealand. Um, we've obviously um, been involved in some of these um, studies as well, um, showing public support in these peer-reviewed reviewed studies as well. There was also um, another um, petition or survey that was done by Neighbourly um, last year when calls were renewed to ban fireworks. Um, and I think, if I remember correctly, 75% of West Aucklanders supported a ban as well. So the public support is there. We get lots of complaints from the public every year um, about this issue and are obviously, um, you know, people very concerned about their animals but also wildlife. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Newman. Um, could you give um, me, do you have any information from the New Zealand Fire Service uh, with respect to fire emergency call-outs relating to fireworks and stuff like that? I mean, I think I understand your business Yep. Um, but do you have anything that you could add in relation to um, fire emergencies? Um, well, I wouldn't like to speak to what, what they see because um, I don't have that information. Um, all I can speak to is, is what, we, what we receive from the public and what we see in our shelters as a result. So I'm sorry, I can't give you that information. But one more, <coughs> Chair. Um, with, with respect to... Um, do you have, a, uh, in terms of the um, the animal um, deaths, um, euthani um, euthanised cases, do you have a breakdown by shelter? Um, I, I don't have that with me, but we could certainly engage on on those kind of things later on if you if you wanted that to. That would be great. <coughs> yep. I could. We appreciate that. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Clo. Yeah, just two questions. Uh, the three studies there, one, yes. two, three, were the uh, who who did the studies? Um, so the first one in 2010 um, was um, done under the Companion Animal Council, the New Zealand Companion Animal Council. Um, the second one, um, we weren't involved in that one. That was specifically related to horses and the manage of management of horses with relationship to fireworks. And the ones la the one last year, which hasn't yet been published, um, but is being written up for publication now was one that we did as an organisation in conjunction with the Companion Animal Council. Okay. And second question, you mentioned strict limitations in some other countries. What? I mean, obviously there's bans, but what are the strict yeah. limitations? Um, I probably can't speak to that because I'm not sure of the exact um, specifics of those and I wouldn't want to make any That's mistakes in, in that. Thank you. Thank you. Last question, Councillor Philippina. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and, 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 and thank you also for the, uh, the presentation. The question is around the surveys. Yes. Now, you mentioned uh, 32,000. You also mentioned 75% of West Auckland wanted to ban the, 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 the fireworks. How many people completed the survey? Um, so in the West Auckland example? Um, that one, I'm not sure about. I, that was a survey conducted by Neighbourly, um, and so it was just reported as 75%, so that's not one that I have intimate knowledge of. Okay. Um, in terms of the ones that, that, that we Sweet. did, so the one last year, um, it was, we reported on almost two, sorry, 20,000 animals, um, and there were over, and that's from about 3,500 respondents okay. from the one last year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'll, I'll move that we receive note and thank uh, Dr. Sarah Zito for her presentation. Do I have a seconder for that, uh, Councillor Casey? Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Thank you very much, Sarah. That was very clear uh, very and much. to the point. Okay. And we're having a discussion, obviously, later in the agenda on this, okay. this very topic. Thank you. Great. Uh, can I ask uh, now Penny Bright to come forward, please? to speak on the review of the elected member's code of conduct, which is also on the agenda for later this morning. Penny, uh, five minutes and then we'll take, uh, we'll take a couple of questions if there are questions on it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before I start, congratulations, Josephine. Lovely to see the town hall packed and members of the community here and being engaged and participating in local government in Auckland. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, I also note that today, the 22nd of February, is the day that the 2017 Transparency International Corruption Perception Index has been announced in New Zealand again as perceived to be the least corrupt country in the world. All I can say is they obviously don't talk to um, unprotected citizen whistleblowers. However, as far as this meeting is concerned, what concerns me is in the, in the process for the review of the Auckland Council Code of Conduct, um, the public have basically been completely excluded as stakeholders in this process. Let's remind everybody that who elects you councillors are the public. And the Code of Conduct is a mechanism by which um, you can be held to account. So I'm <coughs> deeply concerned that the process is excluding the public as a stakeholder. I note the consultation has been with some elected representatives, some senior managers and local government New Zealand. Local government New Zealand apparently has promulgated a revised template for councils to use as far as codes of conduct are concerned. <coughs> Who are local government New Zealand? Have a look through the law books in the, legis in the legislation and see if you can find out any legislation that covers local government New Zealand. You won't. They're not a creature of statute. They are an incorporated society which councils can choose to join if they wish. What is the mechanism by which the public or citizens can be involved in local government New Zealand? Well, basically, they can't because there's no mechanism. So um, what also really concerns me is that local government, the Local Government Act 2002, the purpose of local government is to enable democratic local decision making and actions by and on behalf of communities. The communities, the public need to be involved in this process. As far as Auckland Council Code of Conduct governance principles, the Local Government Act 2002 Section 39 defines governance principles relating to local authorities. The following governance principles are relevant to a code of conduct. A local authority should ensure that the role, the role of democratic democratic governance of the community and the expected democratic governance and the, and the, sorry, and the expected conduct of elected members is clear and understood by elected members and the community. How many of the community even know there's a code of conduct? How is the process by which the public even know about it? And I believe that by involving the public in the review of this code of conduct is a mechanism <coughs> to help make the public aware. 
So in terms of, I note that in the current code of conduct, duty to uphold the law, there are some pieces of legislation that are spelled out, and I note yet again the Public Records Act is not included. My concerns that in terms of considering a model code of conduct, I would like you to consider <coughs> the model code of conduct that has been drawn up by an organisation that's had over 30 years fighting corruption over the ditch New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption. They have come up with a model code of conduct, which interestingly covers both elected representatives and staff. And the big difference here is that um, the New South Wales Local Government Act 1993, Section 440, Codes of Conduct, they've got teeth, big crocodile snappy teeth. There's consequences because under the New Zealand Local Government Act, a breach of the Code of Conduct is not an offence under the Act. So where's the consequences? And what I would like to remind people of is that where the Auckland Code of Conduct has been taken for a test drive, in the case of former Mayor Len Brown, without going into all the notorious details, um, that was treated as a breach of the Code of Conduct. It involved undisclosed gifts of accommodation by Sky City. And, but the point is there's a clear process for a breach of the Code of, of, code of Conduct, which involved the CEO recommending members of a council, sorry, a conduct review independent panel, who then councillors would, would vote on and they would, they would handle uh, an alleged breach of the code of conduct. That didn't happen. The CEO... Can I, sorry to interrupt, but uh, the time is <coughs> up. I'm, I'm going to invite members now who might have questions arising out of it. Uh, the agenda item is the review process for the Code of yes. Conduct, so we may be having discussions um, a little later in the morning or early afternoon as it, it, it may be, and you're very welcome of course to, to be here. It's an open session, it is open to the public or you can watch it as it's live streamed. Are there any questions from councillors? Uh, Councillor Sayers and then Councillor <coughs> Newman. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Ms Bright, you know, for continuous, um, I guess, um, advocacy around, around this. It's, um, and it gives thought, you know, and I'm sure councillors, you know, uh, take on board and hopefully listen to what you're saying because it stimulates um, new thought. And uh, thank you for acknowledging um, our new councillor as well, and I'd like to acknowledge you as well, councillor. Congratulations. So, so look, later on, as, as the, His Worship mentioned, um, we could ask the officers around... Um, how the public might be able to be involved in the process and if that's, if that's a possibility. So that's just perhaps foreshadowing for the officers that question. But my question to you, Kenny, would be, you, you mentioned this uh, um, model, or template I think you used in New South Wales that, that's there, um, and uh, be happy to have a look at that. Um, you might want to send that to the councillors. But in New Zealand, in, anywhere in New Zealand, either Legacy Council, <coughs> Auckland, or anywhere else, um, you may not have done this research, which is fine, if you just let me know. Um, is there any precedence in this country around the type of public involvement that you're seeking around setting code of conduct? Um, not to my knowledge. Mind you, of course, the public weren't involved in the establishment of the super city or the CCO model. We've had a lot of things that have sort of been dumped on us. And, um, but I think that the whole concept of involving the community and bringing local back into local government, that we should be looking at how can we in, uh, give those who are interested, because not everyone is, but some of us are, and some of us actually have some expertise in this area, and the door should be open for people that want to get involved and make suggestions for us to have that opportunity, because at the moment, we don't. Thank you. Great. Uh, Councillor Newman. Uh, Penny, two questions from me, and thank you for the presentation. Um, the reference to ICAC in New South Wales. Yes. ICAC is the Independent Commission um, Against Corruption. Yes. Is constituted by statute, state law. In the absence of statute in this country, beyond the reference to the, um, which is included in the paper, later on, which is, which is um, 
which is pretty modest. What, um, what effective mechanism is available absent statute? Because we are a creature of statute, yep. but the ICAC, um, the commission that applies in New South Wales, which investigates not just state government there, but you know the public service, all sorts, yes. um, is underpinned by statute. It has very, very strong um, offences, penalties, etc. It's got a judge. In the absence of that, how can we emulate? So how can we deliver something similar if we don't have the law behind us to give that? The well, maybe this would actually help to um, encourage New Zealand to get an independent commission against corruption. I think it's sorely needed myself. But what I'm saying is that if you're looking at templates yeah. for codes of conduct, there's one that exists over the ditch. I'm suggesting that it's looked at because something else that I discovered as far as New South Wales is concerned, it's actually unlawful um, for property developers, um, liquor and gambling industry businesses, tobacco industry, to give political donations to elected representatives. That's just another interesting thing in terms of um, what happened with, with Mary Ann Brown. So what I'm saying is there's a template. If you're looking at templates, have a look at it. Can I just one very quick, it's a process. Councillor Newman. Um, Penny, with respect to <coughs> the process that's provided, there's a proposal for a report back and adoption by the 31st of July. Are you proposing um, that there needs to be an amendment to provide for a, a narrow submissions process for the community to participate in providing its feedback in the preparation of such a document? Yes, I am. And the, the earlier the better, because there's no point, you've had all your workshops, you've, you've, you've talked it all to death, and then public input comes later. Um, the public involvement in this process for those who choose to avail themselves of it should happen earlier rather than later, in my considered opinion. Thank you very much. Um, I'll move that we receive note and thank Penny Bright for her presentation. Do I have Second. a seconder? Uh, Councillor Watson. Uh, all those in favour, aye. please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Carrie, thank you very much. I've, uh, I've got a couple of bits of information that I'll want to, If you want to leave that uh, with, with one of our officers, that would be appreciated. Thank you very much. Your Worship, uh, I realise it's still public no, forum, I'm and sorry. I would like to take just a moment no, no, to. I'm, I understand that I'm, it I'm is sorry, under. I'm, I'm sorry, Lisa. Lisa, I received your communication. Uh, it did not meet our standing orders. I received advice from officials as to that effect. You are being given the chance to make presentations and we'll take up that chance with Auckland Transport that has the power to act on your concerns. This body doesn't and won't have in the future. I've made a ruling and I'm sorry that's the end of with the process. With respect, no, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. The problem I'm is sorry. Auckland Council you, is no, I'm sorry, controls I'm, Auckland Transport. I'm not, I'm, I'm Auckland not hearing Transport you, Lisa. Is not you do not in a have the right to speak to at this committee. I've made my ruling. That is why I've come to the elected members I'm, who I'm, are 100% in control of I'm sorry, we have made a judgment. Auckland. So are you now saying that, that this council is not Lisa in control Prager, of Auckland Transport? You are disrupting and disturbing this meeting. Well, Worship, it is public forum. Can you please this is exactly be seated the time that a member and respect of the, the public has the right to ask the procedures and the standing orders of this body. The mayor of the I, Auckland I'm, I'm Council going to repeat, Lisa Prager, you are Transport, disturbing this meeting. Who are out Can you please of be seated and respect our meeting procedures no, and standing orders? No, Your Worship, orders. this council does um, not respect the citizens. Uh, I'm going to adjourn this meeting.